How are you doing? All good? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for being out there. I'm Onimisi Adaba, and this is the men's room. Oh, yes, and boy, do I have a treat for you today. I got all of them techies around me, I'm telling you. Oh, well, don't worry. When I introduce them, you know what I mean. Uh, never had it like this, but uh, let's see. hope I don't get all messed up at the end of the day. But what are we talking about today? We're going to just, uh, you know, be following on the social media and all of that, the Twitter and um, Facebook. You, you'd see I mean, what we're talking about. And what we have up and running for us is uh, mentorship. You know, boys to men, mentorship. You know, um, the way the world is right now, crazy things happening left, right, and center, basically because we don't have mentors. There ain't no mentors going here and there. You know, especially for the boy, the male child. And um, you know what they say? Uh, okay, you don't know what they say. I'll tell you what they say. You know, it's, um, you know, to every son, the father is the first hero. You know, we did that a while back in uh, Without My Father, when we looked at this angle. But we're going to take a look at it from a different angle, which is mentorship today. And just talk to a bunch, with a bunch of people. And you can also call in if you want and share your own story on, you know, looking at the vices and pressure groups and um, all kinds of peer pressure that leads us astray and, um, you know, how good mentorship can just bring us back and all of that. And as they say, you know, Frederick Douglass once said, it is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. That's a powerful one there. I'll say it again. Easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And that's what part of what we're going to do tonight in the men's room with you listening and possibly calling and my um, friends who just walked into the studio to have a chat in this regard. We'll take a quick break and when we come back I'll let you in on who we have in the house and uh, straight up we'll go into the discussion. Once again, welcome on board the men's room. I'm Onyemisi Adam. And so if you're just hooking up, you're right on time. Right on time, I'm telling you. Good timing for you. Mm -hmm. The men's room is what it is. I'm Onimisi Adaba, and today we're looking at mentorship. Mentorship from boys to men. You know, just being able to talk with boys, talk to boys, and um, shape them in the right direction. The girls, too, if you want to join in. Yeah, we're not leaving you out in the cold, but we're quite particular about young men these days because, you know, they say... Um, you know, we know it, we're all in control. You know, the girls get all the attention. I, I don't mean that negatively, you know. The ladies, the girls are taught how to cook, how to do this and how to do that. And boys are left based on assumption and they grow up, grow up the way they grow up and you wonder what happened. So we're gonna look at that today. To help me out, I've got me some, some fantastic friends who just popped in from all the way from the mainland. Um, one is uh, <laughs> it's Yusuf Alimi. Um, Yusuf, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, lovely to be here. All right. Let's hear that again. Um, lovely to be here. Lovely to be here. All right. Now, Yusuf is the head of tech planning department at Visionscape right there on the mainland. Yeah. And then I have Kayode Yusuf. Um, Kayode is an IT expert, computer security, and also the president of Toastmasters. I'm talking Lighthouse. How are you doing? Very well, Missy. Thank you uh, very, very much for inviting me. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. Ade Kumbo. Ade Tokumbo. Ade Thank you. Ade Tokumbo Oluyombo is um, Department Manager, Government Relations Vision Scheme. Yeah? yeah. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to be here. All right. Nice having you guys here. So, um, you know, like, like uh, but we're swinging straight in, no formalities and all of that. It is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. Every boy has got a story. Every child has got a story, you know? And um, we live in dangerous times right now. Crazy times where uh, mentorship, uh, guidance, and um, you know, just being there for the child is difficult considering what is going on with the social media as distraction, with peer pressure, and um, peer pressure now involving all of them, sex and drugs and alcohol and all of that. And things just happening, going crazy, and b our boys turning out the way they're turning out because we are in there. And by we now, I'm talking the fathers are in there. And you know what they say to the son, the father is the first hero. Mm -hmm. The hero is not there, he'll look for that hero somewhere else. And that hero better be a mentor. What's your take? Yeah, um, personally, I think, um, um, looking back at the days when I grew up, mm -hmm. 
things were a bit um, different, yeah. but a lot of things are still the same now. And um, how do you mean a lot of things are still the same? A lot of things are still the same in that a lot of responsibility still lies with the parents. Okay. Yeah, although the social media was not there mm -hmm. when I was growing up as a boy. We uh, played a lot outside. Yeah, we did a lot we of playing a lot outside. outside. And um, for me personally, one of my um, shortcomings, not a shortcoming, but well, yeah, I, I, I could, I, I started driving quite early. And so I could sneak the car out and sneak it back home nice and easy. I mean, I could do that. I could do that for a fee. I'm telling you, I was so good at that. And you know, for me, that was that was that was one of them. You yeah. know, unlike today when you mentioned social media. Sorry, I cut in. Carry on. Yeah. So I said the influence now that um, technology has on um, kids growing up was is more than when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. So they have access to a lot of things that we didn't have access to. Our range was more limited mm -hmm. those days. If you, you you mentioned that you used to drive your, your dad's car, uh, sneak it out, but your reach was still limited mm -hmm. to the environment. Yeah, the but you know, area. with, with yeah. technology now, you have... You're everywhere. You're, you're everywhere. across the world. You can get as far as China in, in two seconds and, and learn things that, you know, have access to a lot of information you're not supposed to have access to. That's quite key. Yes, yeah, so very, it's, very it's key. tougher for parents now to monitor everything their kids do. Even though technology still comes in to put a check and put a um, gag or a check or security here and there, but it doesn't work, does it? Well, it does. Or they have, the, I mean, there's still a way out for a bunch of kids who. I mean, kids, kids are turning out to be like you guys now, all of them techies, like, like you, um, Kaede, all of yeah, them techies. So, so, and all so maybe I would come in there yes, when please. you talk about <laughs> um, censorship of kids, mm. because in security, we say security is when you are yet to be breached. Mm. Right? So no matter how much you spend on security, once a breach happens, then you're breached. And the same thing for kids. So what we have seen these days is that kids actually begin to get much more innovative. So for instance, it's probably difficult to read the teenager's chat because they've got so much abbreviations that say so language. many things. Yeah. I mean, a kid says P-O-B, and you wonder what does pod mean? Maybe he missed the I to make it iPod. Mm -hmm. But it actually means parents on board. So that means so watch what you chat with me yeah. because my parents are around and they could actually look through my chat. Mm -hmm. And they need to see that maybe we're discussing church issues. <laughs> when the chat was actually sexual related. Mm. So kids are actually becoming innovative. much more suave. Yeah. They are becoming innovative. They actually now know how to sideline their parents. So when it comes to watching out for kids, I think parents also need to keep up with times. Yeah, they need to know what's again. going on. They need to know the technologies out there, the social mm -hmm. media. What's so parents the language, know the just Facebook. But there are so much social media apps out there. There's something called Tinder. So very few people know about Tinder. Mm. And people who are on Tinder are there most of the time looking for sex. And it's so funny that anyone that has a Facebook account is able to log into Tinder. Yeah. So this promotes so much things that mm. teenagers should not have access to. Mm. So when it comes to watching out for kids, I think Parents have a lot to do, and I'll just give a quick analogy of what mentorship means. Yeah. So just imagine that you're in the dark, you can't see, right? And then you have somebody who has a night vision glasses, so obviously they can see, yeah. and that person holds your hand and leads you through the way. Mm -hmm. That's what mentorship means. Mm -hmm. So mentorship means someone who probably has experience, who has more knowledge about something, leading you through. Yeah, and, and kind of like an older person, an older person. Well, not necessarily an older person. So, well, I mean, yeah, by that I don't mean like a grand old sage and all of that, but you know, some some matured individual who definitely more matured. Kind of like been there and done that, Very and true. Um, you know, is well placed to be able to lead you, uh, point you in the right direction. And Very all true. That. Yeah. Very true. So a mentor needs to have gone through the mistakes that you have been through. Mm -hmm. So take business for instance. If you want to start up as an entrepreneur, there are lots of orders that you go through. Mm -hmm. But imagine having someone who has gone through all of these orders lead you. Yeah. 
the person sees those mistakes from a distance. Even before you begin the process of making the mistake, the person knows you're going to make the mistake, the person knows the steps you need to take to avoid such mistakes. Is it possible for the person to let you make that mistake to learn a thing or two? So, Because, I mean, sometimes, I, I'm just asking, because sometimes you learn best when, you, when you're all messed up and bungled yeah, up. Yes, I, I agree with you. So sometimes it's good to actually make the mistakes and learn from the mistakes. Mm. So yes, sometimes the person lets you make the mistake, but the person also is monitoring you yeah. as you go through. Because sometimes some mistakes can be way drastic. Oh yes, of the, course. The effects can be so much. Uh, a, a mistake can ruin a company, a mistake can ruin a marriage, a mistake can ruin someone's life. So take for instance, people, young people take alcohol, they go to parties, through this process, there's a possibility of rape happening. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility of driving under influence happening. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility of having an accident happen. There's a possibility of having a car crash that would lead to loss of lives mm -hmm. happening. So if you wait for these mistakes to go this far, then definitely there's no turning back. All right, let me let, me let you hold your thoughts there. And um, let's, let's check out um, Yusuf. You, you, you should have a thing or two to say. You've been quiet and watching us talk and all of that. Now you're smiling. Let's hear some words from you. Um, yeah, I quite agree with you from the beginning. Um, a father should be the hero of his son growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky to have a very present father. Oh, really? Yeah, he, wow. he, he was really present. Um, I remember the good old days of him driving us to school mm. every morning, wow. coming to pick us up. I mean, he was he was also lucky in the sense that he had a job that was close to home, we mm -hmm. live in an estate. Mm -hmm. So the school here in Lagos, yeah, here in Lagos, wow. and um, a place called Egbe, okay, and Thermal Station, mm -hmm. yeah. Nepal, back in the days. Right. Mm. Yeah. So um, he the the workplace was in was in the estate. The school was in the estate. So. It will always pop out of um, yeah. yeah yeah. Mm. It will always pop out of the office and come pick us up from school, drive us home, have a meal, mm. and go back to the office. So it, that that it was <laughs> yeah yeah. It, it was really convenient for him, but that made me always look up to my dad. Mm. Uh, I ended up studying microbiology. Well, I always had a flair for engineering because my dad was an engineer. Okay. So. Um, he was my hero mm. to to um, call it short. No, no, you know, he's still, no, okay. still, still very much alive. Um, when you know what, you know what I remember? For me, I remember one of them days, my our father was taking us to school. And, you know, I had, you know, my sister sat beside me and she felt some bumps in my pocket, you know, my, uh, my pocket. And she was like, what do you have in the pocket there? And I'm like, well, um, stones I'm going to use to count in school. And my father's like, what are you going to count? Why would you go and use stones to count in school? Can we see what you have there? Brought them out and I had cubes of sugar in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, cubes of sugar in my pocket. Why would you have that in your pocket? <laughs> Sweet tooth I was, uh, I still have actually, I'm trying to. Anyway, uh, well that's one of my memories of my father driving us to school then. Uh, sure enough, he collected them and um, anyway, great stuff there, um, but uh, we, we, we hardly have this happening today. Um, today, what we have are busy parents, you know, and um, in some crazy situations, unlike what you said by your folks, you know, your father living within um, the estate school and all of that, we have folks working away from, um, away from home. People are stuck in traffic right now, you know, and by the time they get home, kids are sleeping. Sometimes a wife is even sleeping and so they hardly see themselves and all of that and miss out a whole lot. So that happened to you few good uh, it, it's 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 the norm today and it has a way of also affecting the children, the family and all of that. Not saying we shouldn't make money, but then where is the balance? Where do we lose it? Where do we um, strike the balance there? in being there to mentor our kids and just mold them and shape them in the right direction. I'm going to be reeling out a couple of things later on as the show unfolds. And you can call as well if you want. If you have a story or you'd want to share anything, feel free to call. We have the numbers. Okay. All right, let's, let's have the numbers. On 012770993, 012770993,
And so I see the phone lighting up like a Christmas tree. All right, I, I just reel out the phone so that you'll have it and keep. Let's just have a chat and then we'll get back to the phone lines. You look like you want to say something. I mean, you're looking at me as in, <laughs> oh, you just shut up and let me see what nah, I want to say. Uh, well, I wanted to come in hmm. um, because there's also this cliche um, idea that um, men, only men can be the heroes for boys growing up. Yeah. And um, sometimes for some boys now, hmm. the woman, the mother, yeah, is sure. the present, um, pre uh, the, the one who's present hmm. and who's going to be the hero for hmm. the child. Hmm. Um, when I, I would use an example. When I was growing up, the early part of it, my dad was not living in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So my mom was always around. Mm. And I would say most of the things I learned as a man, I learned from her. Enough respect to your mama. That's it, because she, she was not overprotective like most mothers will be. And she was very strict when she needed to. I, m I remember an experience when um, my brother was climbing up a uh, very tall ladder. He was about nine. I saw him. I was going to like scream my head off. <laughs> my mom was walking right behind me. Just about the time I was shouting, she said, "Let him be. Mm -hmm. Let him climb. Mm. If he falls, he'll get up. Let him learn." Wow. And that's, that's a strong <laughs> mama there. Yes, I, I she, mean, I know some who would just. <laughs> <laughs> She's a very strong yeah, woman, and, <laughs> and don't get it wrong, it wasn't like she wasn't strict or she didn't put us right when we were going wrong, mm -hmm. but she also let us learn, and there were a lot of things. With. So it's not just about the father, not everybody had a father mm -hmm. that was always going to be there for them. So even mothers can play a very, very major role. Let's pick a call and um, hear what this person has to say. You might want to grab your headset. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? You might want to speak up a little louder. What's your name? Deliberate. Okay, so I was going to say that this last caller is one of the very few people that actually have the chance to pay so much attention to their kids. And like you said, it has to be deliberate. Because we have so many things dragging for our attention. Mm. We've got our jobs, for the bills. men, you've got your wife, your bills, and a lot of other things that are dragging for your attention. Mm. A lot of people live on the mainland, they work on the island, you have to go through traffic. The challenges are enormous. But it has to be deliberate. You have to make up your mind that you want to see it as an investment in your mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it does not just pay off for just yourself. Mm -hmm. It pays off for society. Mm -hmm. Let me paint a scenario to you. Imagine the amount of people we have in prison. A large percentage of them are males. I think about 88% yeah. of yeah. them. So imagine if the homestead was right. Probably 50% of them may not find their way to prison. Mm. Imagine what savings this would have cost the government, not having to provide food, legal services to people in prison. Imagine the savings it would cost the society. Because if you have a guy next door that comes to rob you because he did not have a good home training, mm. it rubs back on you. Mm. So these investments are not investments just for our own self, not just for our families, but also for the society at large. All right. Hey, um, what do you know? I think we need to go on a break right now. Yeah? We'll just take a break, read the news, and then when we get back, we'll take, I see them lines called, call, yeah, <laughs> it's as bright as can be. We'll pick all those calls shortly after this break. It's the men's room. Well, let me see Adaba alongside. Yusuf, Kayode, and um, Tokumbo. Meanwhile, Tokumbo, where is that? It's your birthday, right? Yeah, oh, it is my oh, birthday. Oh, <laughs> happy birthday. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, stay with us. It is right. <laughs> I'm going to use mine. I know. You can use it. So how do you get the people to call us? Let's see. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May the month of Ramadan bring to you and your loved ones peace, 
joy and good health. Ramadan Kareem from Power Oil. What do you hear? Cocoa Pops 550 grams is now selling for 800 now. I have water in my office. The keys downstairs. Ask her. Yeah, keys on the front It's in the cabinet. You know, just beside. You see the side of nylon. Men's room right here. Only me see Adava alongside a couple of friends. Yusuf Alimi, Kaidi Yusuf, Adi Tokumbo. Happy birthday, birthday boy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Many happy returns. And we're talking mentorship, boys to men. Um, from parents to um, authority figures that, um, you know, we can look at or people can look up to. You know, just to show them the ropes and uh, point in the right direction. I did say earlier on that I'm going to be reeling out a couple of, um, you know, things about, uh, points about mentorship. You know, um, who areas of mentorship and all of that but uh, we've got a couple of calls alongside um you know the discussion we have let's pick okay we lost that call there but okay. feel free to call there we go hello hello hi how are you what's your name all right sonny is the fact that the mentor really doesn't have to be your father or your mother. No, it could be anybody you meet yes. along the way. Yes. Some authority figure you meet along the way. And like I did say, let me reel a couple of them out now. I mean, you have the um, professional mentor. You know, you, you want to, um, uh, how do you say now, um, succeed or exceed in certain parts of um, the profession or whatever profession it is. You can't do it all by yourself. The people you look up to in that profession you know, who can tell you where they fell, where they failed, and how they made it, and all of that, just to point you in the right direction, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, one of the other angles is uh, a mentor could be an older friend. Sure. Just an older friend who's just got experience in life and uh, just sees things clearly and all of that, yeah? yeah. I agree with that. Um, for me, uh, I've been lucky or fortunate mm -hmm. to have had older friends for most yeah. of my life. Yeah. I mean from um, high school to college, even up till now, I mm. still have 80% of my friends are much, much older, older than me, yeah, so a lot of times people say, you act older than your age, yeah. and it's because I move with people who are more experienced, mm. who know mm. a lot of things. It has a way of rubbing off on you. Yes, it's, it's, it has a way of rubbing off on you. Mm. But another thing is, for mentors, for you to be a mentor, you need to have something that you are passing on. If you don't have personal values, there's nothing that you're passing on. So it's not just about being a father. It's not just about carrying your kids to school and back. There has to be the value that you are transferring to that kid because that's what you cannot be there all the time. Yeah. You're probably with them maximum one hour, two hours a day, mm -hmm. live with them physically. So the other 22 hours, you are not with them. They have more people. They're they're colleagues at school have more time spend peer more peer time peer pressure comes in. exactly but, but the, the values value. that you sow into their hearts into their spirits is what carries them mm. at those times when the peer pressure comes mm -hmm. because something has germinated something has a foundation in them it's easier for them not all the time but most of the time to turn down the peer pressure to control it you know somehow i feel no matter how far the child strays from the right path if the foundation is right exactly. the child will stray i agree i combat. agree because i personally also strayed, I strayed oh a lot. that's a story waiting to be told man <laughs> i strayed a lot and most of the time it's what was there that kept me on track yeah or else i would have lost my way a long time ago you should talk to us um, I quite agree with Sokumbo in the sense that um, it could be an older friend, it could be um, someone you just look up to. I'm easily, mostly, usually the youngest in the room. Mm. Uh, I, have, I have an old face, but well, I mean... Oh really? <laughs> you? Yeah, I do, I do, I do have Now I'm old forced face, to ask how old you are. I like, <laughs> <laughs> like the Kumbo, I'm also a June baby, so oh, in really? a couple of days I'll mm -hmm. also be... Um, twenty something, so mm. you can, yeah, yeah, you can most 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 times I'm usually the youngest in the room. Mm. However, um, I can say categorically that I had um, a very good foundation yeah. in terms of mentorship. So 
living really matters. Yeah, it, really matters. It, it really the foundation does. Foundation really matters. I mean, I wanted to study medicine. Mm. I got a couple of admissions abroad. My dad wouldn't let me leave. You're too young, you can't go. Okay, <laughs> so um, I ended up um, studying microbiology. Mm. Uh, a bit of rebellion in there, yeah. you know, um, affected what I graduated with, but mm. um, still. Um, so while I was in uni, okay, I made up my mind. Um, I'm no longer studying medicine. Um, I don't want to go in, into anything that has a medical line. So I ended up studying petroleum and um, environmental microbiology. Gosh, uh, just you, then one person, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just a couple of you studying. I've never heard that uh, in my life. <laughs> well, it was just two of us, so yeah. um, I ended up in that part of microbiology. However, um, I made up my mind that I'm going to go into environment. Yeah. So, um, give me the impetus to go and study um, for environmental and public health, which was for my masters. But I had a very good mentor, uh, big shot in one of the telecoms, and he told me that he always asked me, "What's your ten-year plan?" If I meet him today, he'll still ask me the same thing: "What's yeah. your ten-year plan?" <laughs> um, so, we meet every other week. Just to review. Just to review. Well, wow. where are you now? And mm -hmm. kind of exactly. So, and I always kept in contact with him, even though I wasn't in the country. It keeps you on the edge. It, it, it keeps does. you on check. It does. Yeah. And it also helps that he was always there and he always responded to me mm -hmm. anytime I needed him. Wow. So th that um, kept me going. Mm -hmm. And today, uh, well, I can't say I'm a mentor, but some people also look up to me. That's, oh, that's I mean, the truth. I mean, I mean um, I've achieved it quite a bit. Uh, for my age, mm -hmm. I mean, you know most people my age haven't quite achieved what I have achieved in terms of um, you know things that I've you done. You are the head of tech planning department. Oh, Vision well, yeah. that's a big portfolio, man. That is just nomenclature. Now let's pick the cause. <laughs> what nomenclature? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? We got the ladies calling today. What's your name? Okay, all right, so good to hear you, good to um, check you out, but uh, what's your angle? Hmm. Hmm. So his job, he, his job um, is more demanding, or his job takes precedence, so to speak. All right, thanks. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Um, I don't know. Uh, we will all talk about it. Let's 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 chip in and see if we can help the lady out. But fundamentally, I think um, the man just needs to make a deliberate effort. I mean, it's a son. It's yours. It's nobody else's. It's yours. Um, yes, it's a busy schedule. It's a busy um, job you have. But <laughs> family first. You've got to put food on the table. Established. That's fine. That's mm -hmm. good. But that child needs you in his life. Matter of fact, you need him or he needs, I mean, they both need themselves because um, um, <coughs> you just can't run away from this. Your child, your child, make time for the child. Understandably, the week might be hectic, but the weekends, you come back a four-year-old, Anyway, go on before I keep... Well, I, I, I think um, I have a son and 
I know that it's not it's very out of character not to love your son so I'm sure he loves his son mm. but I think that he his priorities are misplaced yeah. that's what it is just like you said um, it has to be deliberate I've worked in different um, industries and I understand that there are times the job gets so hectic. Yeah. There are times yeah. you get home, you don't want to talk to anybody. Exactly. You just want to walk into the room just sleep. Be quiet. You Shh. just want your life. <laughs> you know, but if you genuinely love your kids, sometimes when you see them, when you look at them, mm. sometimes when I look at my son, I just know that I need to be there for him. Yeah. I mean, he's growing fast every day. Mm -hmm. He's three now. So, and, and these days, you know, it's, they grow very fast. I mean, by Be eight, fast. nine, if you don't, what you haven't put in there might never get in there anymore. Mm. Back in our days, we can still, we still have up to teenage years, <laughs> but now there's so many other things fighting for that space. Yeah, so if you don't put it early, you might lose him for life. Yeah. You know, so I think she needs to do her part, mm. not just throw her hands up and accept her faith that my husband just like I said it's not just the man that can influence the child mm. but she can also look for you know this is not a mar marriage counseling session so, <laughs> so she can just look for better ways to talk to him okay yeah um, Yusuf just let's hear let's have your say and then we'll move on to um, um, Kylie right um, I'm not married so um, I don't really know how how to go about this right? now she'll take it uh, what i want to say mm -hmm. um i feel the husband like tokumbo said has his priorities misplaced um regardless of how much um or how busy you are okay i failed to mention this growing up my father was also transferred a lot so he moved around he moved around yeah, a lot my father with others that's it. I mean, it was never there for too long. Mm. Um, two weeks in, two, two weeks, weeks out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it mm. was never there for too long. But we always looked uh, up to him. Or we always looked towards him coming back look home. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, um, so from what I gather um, from a statement, if the child isn't looking forward to seeing the father, yeah, it's, a um, it, it's a problem. A very big it's, problem. It's a very big problem. Uh, Take it on so from, uh, I, I, I would say we. This is not a marriage counseling session, but we actually need to look into the marriage because it's difficult for any person to not look forward to welcoming their child, mm. to seeing their child when they get back from work. So I know friends who actually have kids who would go into their children's rooms, that's why the fact that they have children are asleep, mm. just to have a glimpse of the children. Mm -hmm. mm. And I have friends, I mean, I'm the president of a Toastmasters club, and. A lot of our members don't even want to leave home on Saturdays yeah. because that's the time to bond with family. Yeah. And some even come to the club with their children. So it's pretty difficult to imagine that such would happen. So I, I think it's something that needs to be probed further to know what exactly is wrong with the guy. And then, if we, because if the guy is actually chasing money, he needs to understand that money finishes. Even if money does not finish, see, wealth does not define you. Yeah. It's the amount of smiles you put on people's faces that defines you. Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to invest time, your efforts, into the life of your kid, then I wonder whose life you're able to invest into. You know, I, I, I can imagine the lady not even wanting to have another child anymore because of um, this going on. But um, neither here nor there, but uh, what, what I would say is, you know, for the man to just deliberately make the effort, you know. I, it could probably be stemming from what he went through as a child. Maybe he was neglected. I don't know. But um, there's no need revisiting it on an innocent child. Um, you probably, even if you don't know, um, the fact that you know the wife is drawing your attention to this, you know, should um, you should probably yeah, go get help. Yeah, should 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 help out and all of that. But um, I, bottom line is that I hope and pray he makes. Um, it, it's not easy. It, it's it's sacrificial. It's sacrificial, and <laughs> it doesn't come easy. It doesn't. You know. 
The men's room is what we're up to right now. Oh, let me see Adaba alongside a couple of friends, Yusuf Alimi, um, Kaide Yusuf, and birthday boy, Ali Tokumbo. And we're just talking about mentorship and, you know, um, left and right, and especially in these times we're in where a whole lot of things are calling and begging for our attention. Looking at the right influences and um, just how to navigate through the maze called life. It's what we call the spiritual mentor, you know, and also the intellectual mentor. These are guys we find in schools, you know, institutions, educational institutions and all of that who can, you know, just be there to point you in the right direction. So, I mean, easy to say that, um, or going on to say that mentors are not just one person in one direction. I mean, they're, they're, they're in different directions and all of that, yeah? Let's pick this call again and see. We are running out of time. Come on. Hello. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Hey. All right, Daniel. Thanks for calling. What's your angle? Hey, I hope the lady that I called in on her husband not been having time for the song. She just has to be a little bit patient. Then find a way to communicate to the husband because the reaction of the man is, is something he experienced when he was also a child. It's not just um, something that could uh, come up immediately because of his work. That's one. Firstly, I, the proper mentorship, I, I work every day. I don't take my children to school because of my work. They go by the school bus, but I dedicate Saturdays to be with my children. Sometimes I don't share problems I have in the office with them for them to advise me, and sometimes you look crazy, they might say funny things, but at the end I pick something, and I discover after three months, they tend to come back to communicate back to me what they are facing individually. And at the end of the day, I discover my kids after one year, they are all different. So it all depends on the father, depends on the parents, on how they spend time with their children. Well, no matter how busy you could be, there must be a day you could sacrifice to be with the kids. Nice one, man. Nice one. I like the fact that you make up for that over the weekend, regardless of how crazy it gets during the weekend, you know. And, you know, sometimes kids love to be spoken to like some matured mini adults, they, you know. Yeah. You sit down and just discuss issues, you know. One more call and let's see how it goes. Hello? Hi, how are you? Good. What's your name? All right, Victor, talk to us. It's the challenging thing most, especially in this, our age and time, where a lot of things are not working the way it used to be. In our own time, um, our father, our mom, is our first mentor. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, go on, please. The church was playing an active role in as much as our fathers and mothers were also going to work. Although not as serious as uh, what we have in this uh, present time. But the church talking about the boys brigade, talking about the girls guys, talking about boy scouts and the rest of them, mentors we are developed from those angles. We always look for what our captain as somebody that your parents want to report it to. You don't want them to report whatever you've done at home because you have so much respect for your, for your captain in the boys brigade, for example, or your choir master or whatever. So but we don't know the quality of the leaders we have around the church. So it becomes a problem and becomes more cumbersome for the parents that have to be there to do what they ought to do. It's challenging, even for me as a young person living in Lagos, it's very, very challenging. Because even if you want to get involved in the church helping you out, will they be able to actually help you out, putting at the logistics of taking them to the church? So I don't know how we can get out of this, because the schools are not also playing the role they used to play. So we are faced with a very serious challenge as a country, as a community, and uh, as a people. But well, it's quite challenging for me, mm. and I believe for a whole lot of people. I just pray that we will be able to find a way around all this to be able to solve the challenge of mentors in recent times. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for calling. Really appreciate it. 
I'm running out of time. Wish we could take a whole lot of calls and uh, talk all through the night, but um, time is creeping up on us. As we round up, what do you make? Um, let's have some parting words from you guys. Birthday boy will go first on, you know, the issue of um, mentorship, youngsters, young adults, pointing in the right direction. Okay. Um, quickly, uh, I'll just say that uh, we, as parents, I'm one of them. We need to. We need to take it more serious because our contribution to the lives of these kids at the end of the day determines the kind of society that we build. They are the ones who are going to be the main, the key members, the participants of the society in the future. Mm. So it is what we put inside of them that will manifest. So what I always say is every society, the nucleus of every society is the family. Mm. And if the family is wrong, the society is wrong. So we as fathers, we need to do our part. Okay. Remember that always. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll take it from there, where um, it has to be beyond the family also. Um, the government, corporations have to also play their part. Um, creating societies, centers where kids or youngsters can go and develop themselves, you know, IT. The world is stemming towards a technology-driven um, world. So. What we need to do is create centers well, where you are ahead kids, of tech. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they need to create centers where you know kids can go, youngsters can go, develop themselves in the world of technology yeah. positively, mm -hmm. and we might see some change. Okay, how about you? Okay, so I would still recap that mentorship needs to start from the home. Um, the fathers have a lot of work to do. Mm. The mothers also have a lot more work to do. Beyond the home, kids also need to look out for people they want to be their mentors. Mm. And I'll state this that you don't have to have just one mentor. So you could, like you listed out, you could have a spiritual mentor. Mm. If you're someone that is well versed spiritually, you could have an intellectual mentor, you could have a professional mentor. Yeah. You could have. So in mentorship, you're looking for skills, for experience that person has got. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to single people out, approach them ask for their leadership, for their guidance, mm. and then follow through. So that means you also need to be hungry for a change. You also... Go on, I mean, I, oh. I, 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 ooh, you just nearly yeah. there, hungry, yeah, so, even though we're, yes. we're you, out of time. You, you, you need to be hungry for change. You mm. need to want to improve yourself. Mm. And you are not limited by the people around you. You could actually go far. So your mentor doesn't have to be someone you see every day, but they need to be responsible for you. There needs to be people that if you do something that's wrong, they can call you to order, if possible, punish you, and not asking you to kneel down, raise up your hands and close your eyes. <laughs> but there have to be people that you have some fear for, yeah, you like have some rebuke. respect for. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I think about mentorship. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. I, um, I'm sad that we can't go on, we're out of time right now. Please click on the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our YouTube.